This how-to manual will walk you through setting up your training template for LSSC's Intro to Blackboard Faculty Training course. The training template is an essential part of the course, as it is the space where you will complete most of your assignments. Please use Firefox. The materials contained within this guide assume you are using the Firefox browser. Firefox solves many Blackboard issues. Please use Firefox for accessing Blackboard. If you do not have Firefox installed on your computer, you can download it at firefox.com. Before you start building a course of your own, you must first delete the current materials in your training template. Please make sure your instructors have graded all of your work from level 2 before beginning this activity. Number 1. Log into Blackboard and go to your training template. Remember, it's the course called Training underscore Your Name. In your control panel, click Packages and Utilities and then Bulk Delete. Check the boxes next to everything on the list except Users and Test Surveys and Pools. Be very careful about this. If you accidentally delete these items, we cannot recover them for you. In the text entry box at the bottom of the page, type Delete. Click Submit. Blackboard may ask you to confirm your decision one more time. If so, click OK. You are now ready to proceed to Part 2. You will need to download two items from your Blackboard training course before we can begin setting up your training template. These two items are located in the Course Documents section of the course, in the Course Building Resources folder. This folder contains great resources for enhancing your Blackboard course designs. The two items you will need are a zip file containing the orientation unit, a zip file containing graphical headers for your subject area. You should start by downloading the graphical headers for your subject area. It is a best practice to use graphical headers with subject-specific icons at the top of each content area in Blackboard. Using headers creates a more welcoming course for your students and the headers act as visual clues for your visual learners. The e-learning department creates graphical headers for each subject area upon request. Most subject areas already have a full set of headers. Before you can start building your training template, you will need to download one of our header sets. Here's how to do it. In the Blackboard training course, click the link on the left side menu labeled Course Documents. Click the link to the folder labeled Course Building Resources. Click the link to the folder labeled Headings. Scroll through the available heading sets until you find one that fits your subject area. If no heading set seems to fit your subject area, please choose a set that is close enough for use in this training course. Just above the example of your chosen header set, right-click the link for the header set zip file and choose Save Link As. Save the zip file to your desktop or a flash drive. Please make sure you know the location where you are saving your file. This is very important to completing the rest of the setup guide. Find the zip file you just downloaded. Double click it, then click the Extract All Files link located at the top of the page. A window will pop up on your screen. At the bottom of the new screen, click Extract. The headings have now extracted to a folder in the same location on your computer where you originally downloaded the zip file. Next, you should download the zip file containing the student orientation unit for your training template. In the Blackboard training course, click the link on the left side menu labeled Course Documents. Click the link to the folder labeled Course Building Resources. Click the link to the folder labeled Orientation Unit for Students. Scroll down to 1. Download the zip file and save it to your flash drive orientation unit 2013zip right click the hyperlink for orientation unit 2013zip and select save link as save the file to your desktop or flash drive make sure you know the location where you downloaded this file this is very important to completing step 3 of the setup guide do not extract the zip file The orientation zip file you downloaded in the last step contains a pre-made orientation unit for your students. It shows them how to perform the most important task in Blackboard, such as posting to a discussion board, 
taking a test, submitting an assignment, and checking their grades. In this section, we will upload the orientation unit into your training template. Go to your training template. Remember, you can find it by clicking the Sections tab and looking for a course that contains both your last name and the word Training. Scroll to the bottom of your training course. You will see a green box on the left side of the course labeled Control Panel. Click the link in your Control Panel labeled Packages and Utilities. Click the link labeled Import Package. Click the button at the top of the page labeled Import Package. Click Browse My Computer and select the orientation zip file you downloaded in Part 2 of the Setup Manual. Click Select All. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click Submit. Wait patiently while Blackboard processes your request. This could take several minutes. You will know Blackboard has finished processing your request when the yellow bar at the top of the screen contains the word Complete. You will also receive an email at your faculty email address stating the process is complete. Click Home on your course menu, then click Getting Started. This is the orientation for students you just added to your course. Quality Matters wants us to have an orientation unit in our online courses that makes clear how to get started with the course. You can customize this generic orientation unit to fit your needs and the needs of your students before you teach your first class. In Part 3, when we uploaded the orientation unit for students to your training template, it changed the way the blank course template looked. If you click the Home button on the course menu in your training template, you will see that your course menu is now a beige color, and several duplicate links appear on the menu. You will need to rearrange some of the links on the menu and delete duplicate links. Don't worry, this exercise is designed to teach you how to customize the course menu. Nothing is on the menu by accident. First, make sure your edit mode is marked on. The on-off switch is located at the top right of the screen. If it is off, click it and it will turn on. Blackboard uses many symbols as clues for instructors. In the course menu there are several clues. For example, a small gray box next to a course menu item means there's no content in the menu item, which is okay for right now. You are still building content in your training template. Students will not see these items since they are, in essence, blank. Another symbol on the course menu is a white box with a line through it, also located to the right of certain menu items. This means that the instructor has purposely hidden this content from students. Instructors see the link and its contents, but students do not. To rearrange course menu items, click the up and down arrows next to the item you want to move, then drag the item to the place where you want it in the menu. Dotted lines appear in the places where you can drop the menu item. To delete items from the course menu, click the drop-down link next to the right of the item you want to delete and select Delete. Now that you know how to rearrange items and delete items in your course menu, it is time to configure your menu for your training template. First, delete duplicate items in the menu. You should have only one of each of these on your menu. Delete everything else. Home, Course Content, Course Documents. Syllabus and Policies, Announcements, Messages, Tools, My Grades, Support Services, Student Blackboard Help, Groups, Instructor Help, Discussions, and Getting Started. Now, rearrange all items, even the horizontal lines, until your course menu looks like this. Here's a couple more hints for your course menu. To hide a course item from student view, use the drop-down menu next to an item, then choose Hide Link. To add items, such as content areas and web links, to the course menu, click the plus sign at the top of the menu. A list appears with options for possible items to add. The home page is the first thing your students see 
when they log into your course. It is important to create a welcoming home page that tells students vital information about what the course is and how to contact the instructor. Make sure your edit mode is turned on, then follow these instructions for setting up your home page. In the course menu, click the link labeled Home. Click Build Content. This is an important tool to know. It's the way we create most of the instructional content in Blackboard courses. Click Item. Items are your best friend. Almost everything in Blackboard can be done with an item. It has all the functionality of a word processing software application, like MS Word or Max Pages. But it does have, do many other things as well. You can attach files to items, embed videos in items, insert pictures in items, and use a wide array of mashups that LSSC offers. When in doubt, use an item. It's the Crisco of Blackboard. In the box labeled Name, type the word Welcome. In the big blank white box in the middle of the screen, type a welcome message for your students. Be sure to include instructor contact information. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click Submit. The page will reload to show you your new home page. Be aware of some accessibility issues with Blackboard. ADA compliance has become a big issue in online and hybrid classes. We are required to provide equal access to all course resources for our disabled students. We must consider that many of our students are visually and hearing impaired or have some other disabilities that may require assistive technologies such as screen readers. Here's how we can help them. Use black text on a white background, always. Do not change your font styles on Blackboard. Your students can use Blackboard's tools to configure their fonts to best suit them if you leave the default fonts in place. Do not underline anything that is not a link. Students will assume anything that is underlined is a link. Instead, use bold text for emphasis. Never paste text from Microsoft Word. MS Word creates extra coding that confuses screen readers. It's also been known to create massive problems with Blackboard tests and other assignments. Instead, copy-paste your text to Notepad, then copy it from there and paste it in Blackboard. Use Blackboard's Content Editor to format your text. Now that you have something on your course homepage, it is time to set up your course content. The course content section of your course is the place where your weekly materials live. Students know that when they click Course Content, they will find your instructional materials, as well as their assignments and assessments. The first step in setting up the course content is to upload a header to this section of the course. Here's a quick instructional design rule. When you create a content area, often called a folder, you must include a graphical cue, or header, for your visual learners. Remember, you downloaded a set of headers in Part 2. Before you begin these steps, make sure you remember where you saved the graphical headers on your computer. Click the Course Content link in your course menu. Click Build Content, then Item. For the name of the item, type a period. For the color of a name, use the drop-down menu to choose White. We do this so the name doesn't show for this particular item, since the header itself contains the name. Click the picture icon. It's the second icon from the left on the third row of the content editor. If you do not see the picture icon, click the arrows on the far right of the content editor to expand its features. A new window will pop up. Beneath the box labeled Image URL, click Browse My Computer. Find the folder where you downloaded the headers in Part 2. Once there, click the header labeled Course Content, and then click Open. Remember the note in Part 5 about accessibility? Besides leaving our text simplified, we must also provide descriptions of images to meet ADA compliance. Screen readers use these descriptions to describe images to the visually impaired. The two boxes above the picture preview give us the opportunity to enter those descriptions. So, in the box labeled Image Description, type Course Content. Then type the same in the box labeled Title. Click Insert at the bottom right of the page. Click Submit at the top right of the page. 
the page will refresh to show your course content header at the top of the course content area. The best course is chunk content in sequential order for students using folders. Each week in your course will be contained within a folder. We will start by making a folder for week one in the course content area of your training template. Click course content on your course menu. Click build content content folder. In the box labeled name type week one. In the big white box the content editor type begin and end dates go here. Later when you're setting up your first Blackboard course you will insert the start and end dates for week one in this place. Right now we are making a quick template that can be copied to make other weekly folders later. Click Submit. The page will reload and you will see your week one folder under your course content header. Predictability is very important in online and hybrid courses. Good courses are designed so that students intuitively know where to find information. For this reason, each week is structured in the same way. Weeks contain all of the following information. Overview. This item is for your global learners who just need a gist of the week. It's an introduction to the week and it must be short, like no more than two or three sentences. It also contains the objectives for the week. Each week should have objectives that support student mastery of the course objectives. Assignments list. This item is for your sequential learners who need a step-by-step -step list of what to do for the week. This is a numbered checklist of what a student must accomplish in order to be successful. Every sentence in the assignments list starts with a verb, an action word. Lectures and resources folder. This folder will contain your instructional materials for the week such as handouts, PowerPoint presentations, say either saved as PDFs or embedded as flash files, videos, web links, and other instructional information. Discussions folder. This folder will contain your discussion questions for the week. The discussion board is considered the heart of the online classroom by many gurus. If your course does not have discussions, it will need some other form of student-to-student -student interaction to meet SACS and Quality Matters standards for online courses. Submit Assignments folder. This folder will contain the week's assignments, the stuff your students must turn in to you. You'll put the assignment instructions and the mechanism for submitting the assignments in this folder. Summary and Next Steps. This is a reflection component. You will write a statement about what the student learned during the week, plus give the student instructions on what to do next. This is a good place to leave reminders about big assignments on the horizon. In Part 8, we are creating the overview for week one. First, go to your course content and click the link for the week one folder. Notice that you cannot click the folder icon. You must click the underlined link labeled week one. Before you make your overview, insert a header, a graphical cue for week one. Don't remember how? Reread the instructions for inserting the course content header in part six substituting the week one header information for the course content information in the instructions. Remember, every folder, or rather content area, needs a graphical cue or header. Click Build Content Item. In the box labeled Name, type the word Overview. In the big white box, the Content Editor, type the statement in the picture below. Again, keep in mind you are building a template. You will fill in the XYZs and 123s later in the course. The statement should say, This week we will study XYZ. We will read Chapter X of your textbook, participate in an online discussion, and complete the Week X assignment. By the end of the week, you will be able to Objective 1, Objective 2, Objective 3. Click Submit. The page will refresh and you will see your overview directly beneath your week one header.
The assignments list is a numerical checklist of tasks your students must accomplish in order to consider themselves successful for the week. It appears directly after the overview. Go to Course Content Week 1 if you're not already there. Click Build Content Item. In the box labeled Name, type Assignments List. In the big white box, the Content Editor, type the text in the following picture. It says, number one, read chapter X. Number two, read slash view all materials in the lectures and resources folder located below. Number three, post your initial response to this week's discussion question by Monday at 11 p.m. See the discussions folder below. Number four, reply to at least two peers in this week's discussion by Friday at 11 p.m. Number five, Submit the Week X assignment. See the Submit Assignments folder below. And number six, take the Week X quiz. When you are finished typing the statements, click Submit. The page will refresh and you should see your assignments list located directly below your overview. Weekly templates have three default folders. Lectures and Resources, discussions, and submit assignments. These appear after the assignments list. Creating the Lectures and Resources folder. First, go to Course Content Week 1. Click Build Content Content Folder. In the box labeled Name, type Lectures and Resources. In the big white box, the Content Editor, type this folder contains the lecture material for this week. Click Submit. The folder will appear in your assignments list. Click the link for your Lectures and Resources folder. Remember, it's not the folder icon, but rather the words Lectures and Resources. Insert the header, the graphical queue, for Lectures and Resources. If you don't remember how, please read the instructions in Part 6, substituting lectures and resources for course content in the instructions. Creating the Discussions folder. Go to Course Content, Week 1. Click Build Content, Content Folder. In the box labeled Name, type Discussions. In the big white box, the Content Editor, type this folder contains the discussion questions for this week. Click Submit. The folder will appear below your Lectures and Resources folder. Click the link for your Discussions folder. Remember, it's not the folder icon, but rather the word Discussions. Insert the header, the graphical queue, for Discussions. If you do not remember how, please read the instructions in Part 6, substituting Discussions for Course Content in the instructions. Creating the Submit Assignments folder. Go to Course Content Week 1. Click Build Content, Content Folder. In the box labeled Name, type Submit Assignments. In the big white box, the Content Editor, type This folder contains the instructions for completing and submitting this week's assignments. Click Submit. The folder will appear below your Discussions folder. Click the link for your Submit Assignments folder. Remember, it's not the folder icon, but rather the words Submit Assignments. Insert the header, the graphical queue, for Submit Assignments. If you do not remember how, please see the instructions in Part 6, substituting Submit Assignments for course content in the instructions. When you have finished, your Week 1 should look like this. You have nearly finished completing your Week 1 folder template. To finish your Week 1 folder template, compose a Summary and Next Steps section for your students to provide them with reflection and tell them what to do next. This item should be no more than three to four sentences long. Number one, go to Course Content, Week 1. Click Build Content, Item. In the box labeled Name, type Summary and Next Steps. In the big white box, the content editor, type, This week we studied XYZ. 
Next week, we will study XYZ. Why students should begin working on XYZ. Click Submit. The Summary and Next Steps item will appear below your Submit Assignments folder. The Week 1 section of your training template is complete. It should look like this. Now that you have a nice template for Week 1, it is very easy to create the rest of the weeks in your course. All you have to do is copy the folder, then change the name of the folder and its header, the graphical queue, and you have a weekly template ready for Week 2. Here's how to copy your Week 1 folder. Go to Course Content. Next to the link for the Week 1 folder, use the drop-down menu on the right to select Copy. On the next screen, next to the Destination folder, label Click Browse. A window will pop up containing the entire menu for your training template. Click Course Content. Click Submit. Your course content page will reload, and now you have two Week 1 folders. Click the drop-down menu to the left of the words Week 1 on the second Week 1 folder. Then click Edit. In the box next to the name label, change the name to Week 2. Click Submit. The course content page will reload. Now you have both a Week 1 and a Week 2 folder. Click the folder link for Week 2. In the drop-down menu above the header, which still says Week 1, choose Edit. Delete the picture in the big white box. Insert the Week 2 header graphical cue. Remember, the instructions for inserting the graphical cues are located in Part 6. Click Submit. Your Week 2 template is now ready. You can make as many weeks as you like in the same way. You do not have to make any more weeks for this training course. When you graduate from the training course, if you would like a complete 15-week template, send a request to helpdesk at lssc.edu. Now that you have completed the course content area of your training template, all you have left to do is insert the graphical cues for the course documents and syllabus and policy sections of your course. By now, you should know how to do this. Use your course menu to navigate to these sections and insert the graphical headers. Congratulations! You have set up your training template. You will use this template over the next seven weeks to prove your proficiency with Blackboard. Please let us know you have completed the setup phase by emailing bbtrainer at lssc.edu.